Spy Hunter is a 1983 arcade game, top-down, shooter, action, driving, try-not-to-die game. Originally created by George Gomez and Tom Leon, it was inspired by James Bond and actually originally intended to be a James Bond game but due to licensing problems, uh, that fell through. Now, due to its success, this game was ported to many consoles and computer games, and uh, the version that I played was the 1987 version for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Eventually, it led to a movie by Universal Pictures starring Dwayne Johnson, but for whatever reason, for the last 15 years, it's been getting shelved, writers leave, directors leave, for whatever reason, their own projects, but we still have yet to see a movie. But anyway, on to the review. For this review, I'm going to go over five categories, sound, controls, variety, replay, and design, and total those out to get the final score. Now, starting with the sound, possibly the most iconic piece in the entire game. Very basic score, and it's actually the only piece of music throughout the entire game. The music by Henry Mancini is actually a cover for the theme song for the Private Eye show Peter Gunn, released in 1958. The sound overall is pretty minimal. There's only a handful of sound effects, really. Explosions, shooting guns, the spray or uh, weapons, um, you know, acceleration sounds very, very minimal. However minimal the sound is, actually, it's pretty good quality from what I can tell. Um, it's pretty spot on. There wasn't any lag that I could tell. But overall, I'm going to give the sound, due to the lack of music and the variety of sounds, a 2.5 out of 5. Moving on to the controls, very solid, very responsive. You can accelerate, decelerate really fast. You can go from top speed to stopped within like half a second. Shooting is good, steering is good, pretty accurate. So I'm gonna give controls a four out of five. Moving on to variety, which is hardly any. There's four enemies, uh, only a few weapons. The only thing that really changes up the gameplay at all is the scenery, which doesn't have anything to affect the gameplay at all. So in terms of gameplay variety, there's actually one gameplay variety. <laughs> Unless you use the uh, different weapons, which there are only a few weapons, so variety in general is pretty lacking, but uh, you can tell they kind of tried at least a little bit. So you have four weapons, your regular machine gun with unlimited ammo. You have the oil slick, which can only go behind you and trip up pretty much everyone. You have the spray, which is just like the oil slick, basically, but a wider spread. You're going to get civilians almost no matter what, so you're going to lose points if you use that weapon. You have the missiles, which hopefully you have missiles when a helicopter comes by, because those helicopters are very annoying. And that's all the weapons you have. Isn't that great? They're hardly useful. For enemies, you have four enemies. You have the switchblade, which I call the skinny blue guys, which are pretty easy until they bust out their wheel cut things, which pop your tires or something, and cause you to automatically die. You got the fat guys, which are actually called the Road Lord. Uh, I call them the fat blue guys because they're thicker than the skinny guys. And you can't kill them, but you can knock them to the side of the road fairly easy if you hit them right. You got the Enforcer, which I call the Limousine, uh, which are pretty easily until they poke a gun out their window and shoot the crap out of you. And that sucks. Then of course you got the Mad Bomber, which I call the Helicopter because it's a helicopter and it sucks. Of course, on the good guy's side, you got the trucks, which give you your weapons if you can get into the trucks. In there. No! And of course, when they're dropping you off, they leave you open to die, which really sucks, especially if you have a high score, and you get out of a truck with a new weapon, and you immediately die. But for the entirety of the game, you just drive upward and avoid dying, and that's it. And they, they definitely could have done more for this. I'm gonna give Variety a 1.5 out of 5. Moving on to replay, the game's pretty good for about 10 minutes. If you're waiting in like the DMV or something like that, it might be a good game to play uh, if there's a way to get it portably. And if you like these really casual games, it's good for, I'd say, 10 minutes to a half hour gameplay and then you get bored afterward. So uh, it's really easy to pick up and play, but it's not a lasting game. 
So the game is very challenging. For a set amount of time, you don't die for the very beginning, which is nice. So, like I said, if you're in the DMV or something like that, you're not going to be screaming rage because you die every half second. Just as you can see, I have died a lot, and it can get very frustrating. But there's no end goal to this game, really. So you just play until you die. 3.5 out of 5 for replay. Now design I think is actually a pretty good one, it's pretty cool looking, the car is pretty cool, and all the enemies are pretty cool looking, uh, the scenery is is okay looking, I mean the ocean's cool, and it kind of puts you into the seat of the car and you can think of yourself as like a super spy trying to get away from these blue cars. 4.3 out of 5 for design. So to top it off we got 2.5 out of 5 for sound, 4 for controls, Variety gets a 1.5, Replay gets a 3.5, and Design gets a 4.3, totaling this out to a 3.1 out of 5. Not too bad of a game, pretty short-lived. I enjoyed it for the short amount of time that I played it. Barely entertaining, very difficult, but that's it. If you like short games, pick it up. But I really think the game's saving grace is definitely the replay value and the design. If you just want to play something with solid controls for a few minutes, Spy Hunter's the way to go. But anyway, I hope you liked the review. Thanks for watching and have a good one.